Hello guys, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to Miss Fountain channel. In this session, we're going to look at Western bloating. And we're going to begin with a brief introduction of bloating. Bloating can be defined as a method of transferring proteins, DNA, or even RNA into a carrier. And examples of these carriers in include nylon membrane, PVDF, or even nitrocellulose. We have various types of bloating. We have southern bloating, we have northern bloating, and we have western bloating. Southern bloating is used to detect DNA. Northern bloating is used to detect RNA, while western bloating is used to detect proteins. Western blot, these are widely used analytical technique in molecular biology to detect specific protein in a sample of tissue homogenates or uh, extracts. Western blotting works on the principle of gel electrophoresis. In this we find that proteins are separated based on their size on a polyacrylamide gel and some of the steps or the steps of western bloating are the following we have the western bloating pr procedure number one we have load and separate protein samples on SDS page number two electrophor Phoretically, transfer fractionated proteins onto PVDF membrane. And you can see the membrane. We have the gel and we have the membrane. Number three, we have blocked the membrane with neutral protein, that is BSA or even milk casein. Number four, we have incubated the membrane with primary antibody specific to target protein. Step number five is incubate the membrane with HRP labeled secondary antibody specific to primary antibody. So the, the secondary antibody are specific to the primary antibody and the primary antibody are specific to the target protein. In number six, we have incubate the blood with gemiluminescent HRP. Sub substrate and exposed to film those are the steps of the procedure of western bloating in sample preparation I find that sample preparation is done depending on the tissues or the cell present ultrasonication in the case of cell suspension takes place we have mechanical homogenization for plant animal tissue. We have enzymatic, enzymatic digestion for bacterial yeast and fungal cells, or even detergent lysis for tissue cultures. That is just where the, the sample preparation process or procedure takes place depending on the type of tissue or the cells present. In gel electrophoresis, electrophoresis is common, commonly used for separating proteins on the basis of their size, shape, or even charge. In SDS gel electrophoresis, protein samples are separated according to their molecular weight. We have protein transfer. Okay, upon the completion of the of the separation of proteins by the poly, polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis. The next step is to transfer the proteins from the gels to solid support membrane. It's usually made of a, it's usually made up of chemically inert substances. An example of this is nitrocellulose or 
PVDF in the process of transferring these proteins from a gel to a membrane while maintaining their relative position and resolution is known as bloating. Okay, after transfer we have protein staining. After gel electrophoresis, it may be necessary to confirm that all the proteins in the gel have been completely eluted. As proteins are not directly visible in the gel, the gel must be stained. Proteins are usually stained with dyes. An example of these dyes is silver stain, co commerce blue, or the purple. And after staining, a permanent record may be made by imaging the gel with a, with a suitable instrument. After protein staining, we have blocking. And for, meaningf for a meaningful result, the antibodies must bind only to the protein of interest and not to the membrane. Non-specific binding, that is NSB, of antibodies can be reduced by blocking the unoccupied sites of the membrane with an inert protein or an ionic detergent. This is to make sure that proteins by or I mean antibodies by only to the protein of interest and not on the membrane. Blocking agents should be or should possess greater affinity towards the membrane than the antibody so that they can So they can be attracted to the to the membrane, and the antibodies won't bind to the membrane because the blocking agents will already be on the membrane. We have some some of the common blocking agents that we have. We have the first one is bovine serum albumin, that is BSA. We have non-fat milk. We have casein, we have gelatin, and we also have dilute solution of twin twenty. Antibody probing. After blocking, the blot is incubated with one on one or more antibodies. This uses specific antibody to detect a uh, localize and localize the protein blotted to a membrane. The specificity of antigen-antibody binding permits the identification of a single protein in the complex sample. Then unlabeled primary antibody directed against the target protein in specific labeled secondary antibody binds to the primary antibody. The secondary antibody is conjugated to an enzyme that is used to indicate the location of the protein. Secondary antibodies can be monoclonal or even polyclonal in nature. A secondary antibody not only serves as a carrier of the label but also helps to amplify the emitted signals. The signal emitted by the labeled secondary antibody is then measured and is proportional to the quantity of protein of interest present on the membrane. Here we have a, an image showing pro probing with antibodies and detection of the target protein by an enzyme reaction. You can see the target protein. We have other proteins. And we have the membrane. And on the target protein, you can see that is in Y, the Y in, in blue is the primary antibody one in red is the secondary antibody that's the enzyme labeled antibody we also have light emission or calorimetric change caused by an enzyme reaction that's a simple image showing the showing probing with antibodies and detection of the target protein by an enzyme reaction then we have washing in this step, we find that the unbound antibodies can cause high background and poor detection. Therefore, washing the blood removes unbound antibodies from the 
membrane. A dilute solution of 220 in TBS or even a PBS buffer is commonly used for washing. That is to reduce the high background or even the poor detection that is caused by the unbound antibodies. So washing is just to get rid of those the unbound antibodies. Then you have protein detection. After the unbound probes are washed away, the western bloating is now ready for detection of the probes that are labeled in inbound to the protein of interest. Enzymes such as alkaline phosphatase, that is AP, and horseradish peroxidase, HRP, are widely used in detection of proteins. And you have four methods of detection that can be done, that is the types of protein detection, you have radioactive detection, fluorescent detection, chemiluminescence detection, and chromogenic detection. In chemiluminescence method or detection, a, react, a reaction mixture containing a substrate is added to the membrane. The enzyme attached to the antibody catalyzes a reaction that emits light and is detected by X-ray film. In a calorimetric method, that is a, a chromogenic Chromogenic detection and is the same as chromatic detection. So chromogenic substrate is used as a detection reagent. Examples of these are TMB. And we have DAB. DAB is diaminobenzidine, which are commonly used as substrates of HRP. After detection, We have analysis and imaging, and this is the last and major step of the Western blotting technique. Detection of signals using either an X-ray film, scanners, or even CCD results in one or, or even more visible protein bands on the membrane image. The molecular weight of the protein can be estimated by comparison with marker proteins. And the amount of protein can be determined as a as it is related to the bad intensity qualitative and quantitative analysis can be done in order to verify the presence or even absence of specific proteins of interest we have applications of western blood yeah? western blood This okay, Western bloating has various applications. It plays important roles in various fields. And some of the applications are analysis of IgG fractions purified from human plasma. We have diagnosis of HIV by ELISA. Western bloating technique is also used to determine or to detect some forms of Lyme disease. Western bloating is also used in defense tests for BSE. This is commonly known as mad cow disease. It's also a confirmatory test for hepatitis B. Western bloating technique is also employed in the gene expression studies. In as much as it plays major roles, Western bloating is faced by some some challenges, and they include all well, here. These are the limitations of Western bloating: very delicate and time-consuming process. These are very delicate and time-consuming process. It takes a lot of time before the entire process can be complete. Incorrect labeling of protein can happen due to the reaction of secondary antibody. Secondary antibodies can react, resulting in the incorrect labeling of protein. And this will, will make the whole process have 
a result rather than the one that was expected or rather than what is supposed to be considering the the proteins present western blotting requires well trained technicians and that's a limitation that is that is the simple procedure of western blotting thank you for watching stay tuned for more videos like share subscribe see in the next video